What's up everybody, Jason from Jason's Exotic Reptiles. In my last video, I mentioned kinda I was gonna start this reptile breeding series of how to get you guys to become successful reptile breeders and why it's so difficult. Now with that, I'm gonna jump into this video. Piggybacking off last video of what I think you need to have for a minimum breeding group, I wanna talk about why reptile breeding in the reptile hobby is so hard to start a successful reptile business. It's not because you don't have the connections, it's not because you don't have this or that, it's not because you don't have fancy setups. It's a thousand percent you. So, what do I mean by that? It is not easy. If you're looking for an easy business, go sell watches or go sell something else. It's a business, it's a living and breathing thing. If you don't put the time and energy into it, it's going to fail, that's as simple as that. And even if it doesn't fail, you're gonna lose interest. So number one thing if you're gonna start a reptile breeding business is it needs to be passion. If you're not passionate about these animals, if you're not passionate about what you're breeding, you're going to fail, you're going to burn out, that candle's gonna be pushed out very quickly, and you're gonna sell off your whole collection. If you can, you might just give it away. I don't know what you're gonna do once you have a bunch of animals if you're not passionate about this. So first and foremost, you need to be passionate about what you do. That is number one. Second thing here is this is different and unique than selling product. In one way, this is almost more like being an artist than it is being the the watch dealer or you know the, the dealer that is selling a product. It's, it's not like you're just selling t-shirts. Uh, off the rack. You are truly the one behind the scenes making this happen. Why reptile breeding is so hard and why becoming a reptile, a successful reptile business is so difficult is because it, it's you, it's nobody else. So I cannot hire somebody to come down here and take over and be me. New England reptile distributors, distributors cannot replace Kevin McCurley. You know, these places are driven and are funded and backed by this person. If this person leaves, somebody else can run the day-to-day, -day, somebody else can do the finances, but they can't paint the picture like I can. They can't paint the picture like Kevin can. We have it in our mind of what we need to do, years worth of built up knowledge that we've learned through firsthand experiences, and Kevin by far super or exceeds my level of knowledge. So I don't want to put I don't even want to put myself on the same level as Kevin, but I do want to compare myself in the same fashion where, where we have some successful reptile businesses at different scales. His is mega scale and mine is smaller, more medium scale. But with all that said, it is Kevin cannot come in here, do what I do. I cannot go to there, do what he does. I can do it, but it won't be the same. It's gonna be different. It's almost like learning how to paint. Paint night is a perfect example. You put 20 people in a room looking at the same object, you're gonna get 20 different paintings. And that, in my sense, is why I compare reptile breeding to art, because everybody's interpretation of what's special, about what's unique, and what's good is, is different. It's all unique. Everybody's methods are a little bit different. So I may have the same thing as somebody else, the same vision of what I want a snake to look like, but what I'm doing is being tweaked just a little bit different. I'm changing my temperatures differently. I'm changing, you know, my feeding a little differently. Um, all of that plays in. It's like how you hold the brush. The way you stroke the painting is going to be different than the way I would. So all of that kind of combines to paint a different picture. I cannot have my wife come down here and do what I do. It's me or nobody else. And I think that's what makes reptile breeding and the reptile business so difficult. Not necessarily the breeding aspect of it, but running it successfully is a lot of people get into this and they think, I'll just hire somebody. I'll do this. I'll, you know, it's okay. I'll take a long trip and I'll have my buddies come over and help clean some snakes. That works on a smaller scale. But when you are trying to pump this up to an actual business in a larger scale business, you're gonna fail because there is no substitute for you. Picasso didn't say, hey, Jason, you wanna go paint this for me? I don't feel like painting today. There's never a way to turn off your reptile business. And to me, that's one of the most difficult components of this is these are living, breathing animals that if you are not there, if you don't show up and take care of them, nobody is gonna take care of them. You could hire somebody to do it, but nobody's ever gonna do it like you. You could train somebody to do it, but they're never gonna do it like you. If I'm not in these cages, 
a couple times a week looking at the animals, seeing how they're moving around the cage, seeing how they're reacting, um, are feeding them, doing all the daily things, you're eventually be gonna just struggle. You're not gonna be very successful. And that's why I think it's, it's good, at least in my opinion, other people's will disagree, to keep it on a level where it's large enough to support itself, but small enough you don't need to rely on employees. Now, I recently have a couple guys that come over, help me clean stuff, and I enjoy it, to be honest. It's good conversation, talking with people. They're paying attention to stuff that I'm like, who is this person? What is this morph? What are you guys even talking about? They're actually some of the reasons why I started my Patreon. They're like, yeah, you should start a Patreon. I'm like, the hell is Patreon? So I looked into it, and I'm like, all right, cool. But it's kind of keeping me connected to the outside world. Me, when I'm down here, I don't care what's going on in the outside world. It is this. I don't care what Joe Snake Breeding is doing. I probably don't even know who Joe Snake Breeding is. Not because I don't like them and I don't want to know. It's just this is my own passion. This is my own world down here. And if I'm passionate about it and they're, I'm producing things that I like, I know there's other like-minded people out there. They'll catch on to that and they will like it. So first and foremost, you have to have the passion. Secondly, there's no substitute for you. You are the artist. You cannot pass the, pass the paintbrush to somebody else to paint it. Uh, and I mean, with that, I think that's kind of the gist of what I wanted this video to cover is that's what makes it so hard and so challenging is there's no substitute for you. So if you are willing to put in the work, if you are truly passionate, then go for it. But do not follow the crowd. Do not get into a snake species because you want to be the billionaire snake breeder. There can be money in this. Certainly can be. But it has to be passionate. It has to be what you want to. If you chase the money, you're going to be chasing it for the wrong reasons and you're going to get burnt out. If you want money, go collect baseball cards or go collect watches or whatever. There's other ways to make money that don't have, that are not as stressful and are not as dependent on you. For instance, I, I like using the watch analogy too because I could sell you a watch and you could go sell it to somebody else and there's really no art form to it. Of course, there's, there's somewhat of an art form. You need to know what you're looking at. There's more of an education component. Selling watches can be learned, or I should say, you know, the market of watches can be learned, whereas the market of reptiles is something that can be learned but also has a component of the passion to it. The snake is not going to sell itself. You need to sell the snake. You need to be passionate about what you're working with because it's not as simple as just buying it, let it sit in a drawer, and selling it when a customer comes along. You have to care for them. It's constant. It's nonstop. It's very rewarding, and that's why I do it, but it's something I'm passionate about first. So I've been rambling on for I don't know how long. And uh, with all that said, I don't know if there's anything else I can say about this. I'm looking at a Burmese python. I'm going to go pull her eggs and make you guys another video. As I said in one of my previous videos, I'm probably going to post that on Patreon only because YouTube will start turning my channel off if you guys don't start clicking on these videos. So with all that said, I appreciate you guys. Until next week, let's keep it moving. Thank you.